Queen Victoria has stood here since this building opened in 1890. Queen Victoria statue is made of Carrera marble. Carrera marble is from the north of Italy and that marble was chosen because it was a softer marble than any other marble. This is why they get such detail into the dress and such carvings on it. Artist F.J. Williams was the man who carved all the statues of Queen Victoria. There were actually 13 of these statues made and they were sent throughout the empire. This is the first to be unveiled in Ireland. It stands six feet tall, but actually Victoria was only four foot 11. They made all her statues six feet tall as a symbol of her power. This statue suffered a fire in 1908 and also two bombs in 1972. You will see by her hands, she has lost one of her hands and also she has lost part of her thumb. That was in the 1972 bombs. The damage was done to the statue then. Victoria has earned her right of passage and she's still here today. This is the time capsule and this, this actually was found in the basement of the guilt hall when we started renovating uh, the guilt hall in 2010. This time capsule was placed in the bottle. The bottle has now broke so the elements also got at the artefacts within the time capsule. This is one, one of the artefacts that was not damaged. This is uh, the Londonderry Standard newspaper. Londonderry Standard was based in Shipkew Street and this is dated the 27th of August 1887. The price, one penny. And what the newspaper covers is mostly emigration. Uh, a lot of people were emigrating at this time to the new doors were now open to Australia. America and Canada were still popular as ever, but people were emigrating to those countries. Also, it's an advertisement for different companies within the city. Uh, they sold from coal to wool to uh, shoes. This is a line of coinage of the period. Mm -hmm. uh, none of these coins exist today. So these are today very expensive coins. Some of them are gold. Uh, you can see farthings down here, uh, or sovereign, gold sovereign, right up the half crown. Uh, Queen Victoria's on them. Again, we saw the statue of Victoria as we came into the building, and Queen Victoria is very prominently displayed on, on the front of all the coins. She was queen at this time. So this was found when we renovated the building. Uh, we renovated for City of Culture, and we renovated from 2000 and uh, approximately 10 right up to 2013. And 9.5 million pounds was spent on the building. And when they started in the basement to dig the basement, they came across this time capsule. And here, the mayor's parlour. The mayor this year is Hilary McClintock. And Hillary represents the DUP party of the city, the Democratic Unionist. That is one of the clauses now in the, the mayorship that you represent all of the people and all the people are represented by her. This has completely been refurbished and as you can see by your surroundings, most of the wood again is oak because the Gaelic word for dairy is oak. Dairy means oak. Their photograph gets put up on the wall and it, uh, it, has, to be, it has to be about a year after they, they serve the city, usually about a year after their, their photograph goes up on the wall. And their mayor's going right back into the 70s uh, and next door here in the Whittaker Suite. They go right back to the 70s and you can see on the walls here there are some more modern mayors. And we used to have uh, a chain for the mayor and on the chain there, were two, there was a medallion and there were only two of those medallions given out by William of Orange. And William of Orange, who had won the Battle of the Boyne, gave two medallions, one to Dublin and one to Derry. And the one in Derry served the mayor as a medallion and William of Orange's portrait was on it. The mayor will serve approximately a year. Mayors can serve longer. In the past, there has been mayors in the 1800s, uh, 1700s, who have served maybe eight, nine terms, nine years in a row. Uh, that was cut down to about five years in a row. And then some mayors had two years in a row in recent times, but usually it's just a year. Probably the most prominent person I visited was President Bill Clinton. And President Bill Clinton would have been received by the mayor. Uh, prime ministers uh, have come here, uh, heads of state, Jason Donovan, uh, Westlife, you know, young, young bands that were just coming up. 
they, they would have started their, their claim to fame here in the city. The pipe organ was installed here in the Guildhall in 1912. There had been one previously, but that had been destroyed in a fire in 1908. This pipe organ was paid for by public funds, public subscription, so people raised the money for it. Because had you had a hall of this size, it was the done thing to have a pipe organ to entertain people. There are 3,132 pipes in the organ. They all go back in rows. Uh, the pipes themselves, they're made out of zinc. Um, some are made out of uh, wood and some are made out of a mixture of lead and zinc. And it's to give each one a different resonance. Because they go back in rows, there was a wooden enclosure made to house the pipe organ. And that was designed by the city architect, Robinson. And he was also the man, incidentally, who designed Austin's department store. This uh, pipe organ was installed in 1912 and as part of the refurbishment work of the building uh, that went on between 2010 and 2013, the pipe organ was completely restored externally. But during that time, a lot of uh, dirt and dust with the building work got into the internal workings of the organ. Uh, that has now been fully restored and it can be played. And anyone who visits the Guild Hall that can play uh, a pipe organ in a church is welcome to come without appointment and they can play the pipe organ for themselves. The Guild Hall is reputed to be haunted um, by the ghost of an ex-superintendent of the building and his name was Sam Mackey. And a lot of people claim to have seen his figure. And if he has been seen, um, he's not a spectral figure. He looks as real as you or me. So he's been seen on the stage a lot. And he's also been seen on the back gallery uh, just behind me. I haven't heard anybody uh, say anything about from the last few years, but a couple of the older members of staff who have been here for 30 years or more um, have said that they've had experiences on the building. Um, things like electrical appliances being switched off at a switch when nobody else has been there. They've heard noises at night um, and some people claim to have seen them too. These series of windows uh, were erected in 1913 and they were to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the Honourable the Irish Society. The Honourable Irish Society was uh, created by the Guilds of London to administer their affairs in Ireland. Going from left to right, these windows uh, give the history of the city from the time of the patron saint, St Columba, here on the left, through to the time of during the Nine Years' War and the creation of a garrison town here through to the time of James I and the creation of a plantation city and the involvement of the guilds of London to the time of the building of the city walls which started in 1613 
through to the time of the closing of the gates during the siege by the apprentice boys. And then the siege itself and the relief of Derry. And then finally the commemoration of the siege then 100 years later. Five windows here at the top and starting from the left and then moving right. All these windows at the very, very top were donated by different London companies. The very, very first one is the Skinner's window. Can you see that there's two animal motifs and they've got a shield in between them? Yeah. And the Skinner's, they dealt in the fur trade. And the things that are on the shield at the front, they're animal pelts that are drying. So that first window is for the Skinner's. The next window, can you see that there's two gruffins and they're on either side of a shield? And just above the shield, can you see the knight's helmet? Mm -hmm. Just above the knight's helmet, there's a camel with a pack on its back. And the camel with the pack on its back denotes the spice trade. And that window was donated by the grocers. And the middle window with all the fish on it is for the fishmongers. And then the next window, there are two griffins again. And you can see that they've got bales in their hands. And that window, you can see D's around the outside in the decoration. Yeah. That window is for the drapers. And then the very, very last window, the window with all the barrels on it, is for the vintners. And they would have um, controlled the price of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And just above the barrels, you can see that there's a swan in the window as well. And they've always been associated with owning swans on the River Thames. Well, if we look at these three windows, the thing that you'll notice about each of them, they've each got a view of the river on it. You'll see on the second window across, that's a depiction of the city from around about 1830. And it's depicting the wooden bridge, which was the first bridge across the River Foyle. And that was a cantilevered bridge, uh, so it could move to let ships pass through. And then right up to, this is a view of the city in 1914, so that's a view of the Carlisle Bridge. Mm -hmm. and where well, that would have stood, that was built in 1865 and it was a two-tiered bridge and railway carriages would have run underneath it. So um, when goods would have come in here to the city, when it was a huge port, and they could have been easily taken over to the waterside station and then distributed then throughout the country. The next window that we come to is the Commonwealth window. And you can see that there's the names of lots of different countries on it. And these are all countries that soldiers would have come from to fight in the First World War. So you can see New Zealand, Newfoundland, Australia, India, South Africa. Now these last six windows uh, are the war windows and they commemorate the 1914-18 war. And at the very, very top, you can see that there are the like crests or cap badges and they're the crests for different Irish divisions and different Irish regiments that fought in the First World War. And then detailed down each side, you'll see the name of places. Uh, so in this first window, you've got Mon, Eep, uh, some of the other windows, Passchendaele, the Somme, Gallipoli. So they're all famous battles and engagements from the First World War. And they were all battles that Irish regiments uh, took part in. And then the figures that are at the bottom the very first figure, the winged figure, if you look above the wings of the airplane, can you see there's three circles and you can see R, A, F. So that first window figure is Icarus and that window is for the Air Force. The next window, the figure in it is St. George and the Dragon and that depicts uh, the land forces. The third window across, the lady with the shield, and you can see just up above her, you can see R, N. That figure is Britannia and that is for the Royal Navy. And if you look at the sides of the window, you can see uh, battleships and dreadnoughts. And even down at the very, very bottom, you can see a submarine. Mm -hmm. So that window is for the Royal Navy. And then the next figure is Neptune. And you can see the two M's up in the circles. And that's for the Merchant Navy. The fourth figure across just here mm -hmm. is for the Royal Army Medical Corps. Okay. And then the very, very last figure, the lady with the dove, is the peace window. And the same sentiment is echoed in the war memorial up in the diamond. Uh, we have the angel at the top for the Air Force, 
and the soldier and the sailor for the land and sea forces.